Are you making these mistakes? If you're learning Portuguese, the kind from Portugal, you may have realized that the pronunciation isn't actually as straightforward as you thought it was. This is the number one sticking point for beginners because they just say what they see without knowing the pronunciation rules that we have in European Portuguese, ending up butchering the words they're trying to say and not being understood. Can you relate? So in today's episode, I'm going to talk you through five common pronunciation mistakes and how to fix them. If practical Portuguese lessons in plain English is what you have been looking for, you are in the right place. My name is Liz and this channel is dedicated to helping you improve your confidence and conversation skills in Portuguese, the kind from Portugal. So please subscribe so that my videos can reach more people and give this video a like if you're ready to get started. So pronunciation is always the first thing that I cover with my students because it really is the foundation that the rest of your knowledge needs to be built on. There is no point in having a long vocabulary list if you can't actually pronounce any of it correctly, you just won't be understood. So the first mistake that people usually make is using Brazilian Portuguese. Now let me be clear about this, Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese, they are the same language, but they do have some major differences. So when we teach them academically, we do actually distinguish which one that we are teaching. So using Brazilian Portuguese pronunciation is not wrong. There are tons of Brazilians living here in Portugal and I've also lived in Brazil as well for a long time. So sometimes my accent does have a little flavor of that still. But if you are moving to Portugal or spending lots of time in Portugal, then it just makes sense to learn the variation that is spoken here so that you will be understood and most importantly, you will understand everybody else. So the biggest habit to break if you have been learning Portuguese from something like Duolingo, for example, that does give you Brazilian pronunciation, Google Translate is another culprit for this, is using your open vowels. So in Portugal, the Portuguese will close their vowels a lot more, okay? So with a word as simple as perfect, in Brazil, they would say something like perfeito, but in Portugal, they will say perfeito. So can you hear how that first E, instead of being E, it's an U, uh, and that's quite a big difference. That is one of the reasons why it's often harder to understand people from Portugal because there are so many closed vowels and also syllables that are not stressed. So this is one of the main things that you need to be thinking about when you are doing your pronunciation. I do have a longer video on the differences between Brazilian and European pronunciation. I will link it in the description so you can check that one out next. Next up, we have the mistake of using Spanish pronunciation. Now, lots of people start learning Portuguese and think, this is gonna be a breeze because I already speak Spanish. Incorrect. While Spanish and Portuguese share about 80% of their lexical structure, the pronunciation really is quite different. For example, the letter S, it's mostly just a S in Spanish for words like antes, casa, sapo. But in Portuguese, the S in those words is actually going to be pronounced differently in each word. Antes, a sh sound. Casa, a z sound. And sapo, that's the s sound. So we have sh, z and s for S. This is one of the places where people will really trip up if they're only relying on their Spanish knowledge. Portuguese is also very different from Spanish in terms of stress. In a sentence like, Donde estas? Where are you? Donde estas? I'm putting equal emphasis on each of those syllables. However, the same question in Portuguese, Onde estás? Onde estás? You can see that those two middle syllables, first of all, you had a closed E in the ond, which is what I was talking about in the last point. And then we also have the U from estás. Both of those are closed. They're quite hard to hear. So you can see that the stress is going on only the beginning syllable 
and the end. This is because Portuguese is what we call a stress time language. We will actually just stress uh, syllables at regular intervals instead of every single one. This is why it's much harder to understand Portuguese when you hear it spoken in the street than if you were listening to Spanish or even Brazilian Portuguese. I do have a video on this concept and also the differences between Portuguese and Spanish so they can also be extra homework. So speaking of stress, another really common mistake is putting the stress in the word in the wrong place. So we were just talking about that. Question is, how are you going to know which uh, parts of the word you should be stressing? Well, there are a couple of ways we can work it out. The first one is nice and easy. There may actually be an accent on the word that you are saying. It will look like a little squiggle on the top or a little hat. The official words for those are tilde and uh, circumflex. So this is telling me not only how to pronounce that vowel, but also that that's where the stress should go. So for example, the word for apple, maçã, maçã. Because of that squiggle, that tilde on the A, it tells me the stress has to go there. Another example, the word for building, prédio, prédio. The E is the one with the accent. I like to think of these ones as them having their hand up saying, hey, pick me, make me the stressed letter. So this one has to be the stressed letter as well because that's where the accent is. Also, English, English. That's the circumflex accent I was talking about or a hat more informally. So that tells me that the stress has to go on the E. But what about if there are no accents in the word? Well, in that case, we might want to switch to this default rule, which is placing the stress on the penultimate syllable. So I have to break up longer words into syllables and decide which is the second to last one, that's what penultimate means, and then that is where the stress is going to go. For example, apartamento, apartamento, you can see that the me is where the stress is going to go because it's the penultimate syllable. This is one that my students get wrong all the time. Viaging. Viaging. Okay, it goes on the A. That's the middle, that's the second to last syllable. Sometimes it can just be a vowel by itself that is making up the syllable. So make sure that you're careful about that and look out for those correctly. Are you guilty of any of these mistakes? Comment below in the comments which are the words that you find difficult to pronounce and I can make a video on these in the future. You can also head to the description where I have a free pronunciation guide that covers the seven most difficult sounds in Portuguese with accompanying audio so you can improve your pronunciation today. The next most difficult thing to master are the nasal vowels. Now for us native English speakers, this is going to be particularly difficult because we don't really have much nasalized sounds in English, all right? So first of all, what does it sound like? Well, when we say A, E, I, O, U, normally our vowels, you can see that the air is just coming up through your throat. But when we want to make these nasal, A, E, E, you can actually see that I'm engaging my nose as well. The air is coming up through my throat and down through my nose at the same time. This can be a little bit tricky to master. It will, you'll sound very exaggerated when you first start to try and do this, but it will get easier with time. So the next thing I need to know is when to use these nasal vowels. Well, I already mentioned the worm, the tilde accent. This is going to be one of our giveaways to say we have to nasalize the vowel that goes underneath it. So I already mentioned masin, the word for apple. You can hear that that final A, masin, it's nasal. It's coming out of my nose as well. More examples. Pain, the word for bread. Pain, or the word for dogs, cães, cães. It's definitely going to take a bit of practice, but I promise that you will get there. One of the moments that people forget that they need to use a nasal vowel is when a word ends in M. We don't actually say the M sound. Instead, that's a clue to us that we have to nasalize the vowel that goes before it. This is why we don't say bom dia for good morning. We say Bon dia. We make that O nasal. Knowing this one is a game changer. 
So the final mistake is letting your English interfere and using English pronunciation. There are lots of similarities in words in Portuguese and English because they both have Latin roots, but you need to remember that we have to apply the Portuguese pronunciation rules even when a word looks like something that we would know in English. So for example, we say ultimate in English, uh, uh, but that's not how the Portuguese would say it. They would say Ooh, the U is an OO sound, so I can't say ultimo, <laughs> I have to say ultimo, because also the uh, words that end in an O also have this OO sound, not an O like we would have in English. Another word that people get wrong a lot as well is the word português. Because it kind of looks like Portuguese, they say a CH sound for the T, because that's how we would say it in English, right? But in Portuguese, we want a T, T sound, not a CH. So it would say Português. Just by making these slight tweaks and looking out for these mistakes is really, really going to improve your pronunciation. So I hope you are already feeling more confident after this lesson. As I say, don't forget to visit the description and download my free pronunciation guide. I think it's going to set you up for success. Or you can stop by my free lesson for beginners where we will dive even deeper into these topics. I'll be back next week. Ciao for now.